Okie doke. Alright, so this is that uh, little USB wireless card that John brought to me to fix. And hopefully, I gotta fix the vibration on this arm. But uh, basically, right now I got my soldering iron nice and heated up. I'm gonna go ahead and try and desolder these parts. Uh, it should be a fairly simple affair. Just the pin stuck on here. In fact, I should be able to simply heat up this part and just pull it off. Yeah. Alright, so there's obviously a little more heat sinking than I expected there. Okay, that one came right off. Okay, see? There's one pin gone. Just going to use some solder braid here solder wick, whatever, clean off the excess solder from that pad, and here again, same, same deal, yeah, we've got a little, got the pin, as you can see, just gonna get rid of that, and uh, go in with the solder braid, heat up the braid, heat up the solder, and then the solder wicks up into the braid if it'll heat up alright I'm going to turn up my temperature a little bit I'm at about 300 degrees celsius right now I'm going to go up to about 350 obviously we need a little more heat in this application there's just a lot of seems like there's a lot of um, ground planes and just large copper deposits basically I think that's basically what's going on with this guy and there we go he's off another pin all right go in with the solder braid This must be the ground pin. In fact, I'm almost sure it is the ground pin just by, well, not even looking at the traces, but it's taking freaking forever to heat up. So, more than likely we're pretty much heating up the entire board right now. to about 450 degrees Celsius. One thing obviously I have to be careful about in these situations, especially with three, 400 degree heat, is a condition called thermal shock to the system. It's basically you concentrate so much heat in one point that the rate of expansion of different parts you know causes them to actually break and this stubborn little guy just does not want to come off that's extremely surprising I mean, I'm able to heat up the solder these grounding mechanical pins. Let's see if I can't wick some solder out of here. 
Yeah, we can. Clear up this joint here. So you can see we're picking up a lot of the solder on here. Hmm, this guy just does not want to move. Alright, going to a little trick. Is uh seems a little counterintuitive, but go ahead and pull my spool of solder I got hanging up over here and just put a little extra solder on it. There we go. Um, sometimes it's just you're not getting enough heat transfer, so you put an extra dollop of uh, good old solder on there and all of a sudden you can transfer that heat a lot better so I'm going to turn back to about 350 degrees um, to go in with the solder wick right. so solder wick works pretty much the same way as you know soldering any other piece of electrical equipment you have to get the two pieces of metal up to the point of molten solder and then capillary action takes over good times so I'm trying to do this one here again this is a ground plane connection Oops. Um, usually these mechanical connections will be grounded not only because you know it's a safety thing this is the outside shielding of the USB connector but it's just a lot more convenient turned out to be a little trickier than I thought it would be. There's a lot of freaking solder in here. Wow. Okay. Uh, 